Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to The Money Zone. I'm your host, Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I am so excited to be here with you guys on this amazing Tuesday. And we have a special guest, okay, coming in the building. She has, I, the first question I may ask her is how do she do it all, okay? So we have Bolali Williams Oli coming on. She is the Chief Financial Officer of uh, Maxina Duffy, guys. And honestly, you've never really hear um, a Nigerian or Black American or Black women in general being CFOs of organizations. So this will be an exciting conversation tonight, guys. So... I advise you guys to grab your pen and grab your paper. And if you know a mom that is aspiring to be able to do it all, own businesses and um, be able to juggle her life and pull it all together, um, then you want to share tonight's feed with them because our guest is not only um, the CFO of her um, company, she's also a multi, what they say, multipreneur. She has so much going on. So I'll read her bio when we come back. So share the feed for your mompreneurs, um, the wives, and just women in general that needs advice like tonight, okay? So do me one favor, share the video, grab your pen, grab your paper, and give us two minutes, guys, and we will be right back.
Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to The Money Zone. I'm your host, Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. And guess what? Tonight is an amazing night for all of my moms, all my mompreneurs, all of my women that probably feel like um, they can't push it to the limit or basically they can't have it all. So we have an amazing mompreneur in the building, Bolali Williams only, guys. She is the chief financial officer and part owner of Mencina Duffy, a technology first design firm based in New York City, where she oversees the firm's financial and operational performance. She has over 12 years of experience working in the AEC industry with a strong background in financial analysis and strategic initiatives. At her core, she thrives on building relationships between finance and management teams to ensure the overall financial success of projects and her firm. Her clients include, girl, look y'all, some very, very, very big names now. Her clients include American Airlines, Soho, Soho House, Brooklyn Nets, um, Verizon, and NBC Sports Group. She is a dynamic leader within the AEC industry who has been a guest panelist for the American Institutes of Architects, Women Leadership Summit, the National Organization of Minority Architects, 47th Conference, and Mother Honestly Summit. Bolali is passionate about service and is the founder of several organizations. And we're going to talk about a few of those today. She's in charge. She's the founder of She Builds Ways, She Builds Lives, Reach Nigeria, She Builds Money. Before her current position at Messina Duffy, she served five years as senior project accountant at Skid Moore Owens and, and Mural, and five years as project management at HLW. Guys, help me welcome Bolali Williams only to the money zone. Hi everyone. Hey girl, how are you? Okay. Here. Not even like butcher your name or anything. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. All good. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Hi everyone listening. I am so excited because we've had women on the show before, but we've never had women that like, I don't know if you saw the Sir Jessica Parker movie when it's called How Does She Does It All? Like basically. <laughs> So much going on. And I know we have the topic about the financial stuff and everything. But when I see women of your caliber on the show, I want to be able to pick your brain as well. So I am going to dibble and dabble both in how you juggle it all and being a mom and business owner, CFO, and and, and also the organization. Is that okay with you? Completely fine. You know, I love to talk about these things. I'm so glad you shouted out the moms in the beginning. So um Mom's in here. Let's get into it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So before we even deep dive, can you tell me how did you get to uh, work with Messina and Duffy? How did you land there and become the CFO, which is very rare, guys, for a <laughs> black woman, African, Nigerian woman to be the CFO of any organization um, of that caliber that's been around for so many years. So can you tell us the gist of how you was able to obtain such a position? Yes, of course. So I've been at Mancini now for the past four years. Um, uh, like I, like uh, Felicity had said, prior to coming here, I was working at another firm called SOM. I had two kids. You know, I was pretty comfortable. And I remember getting a phone call uh, from an old colleague from my very first job, right? So guys, here we are talking about the importance of relationships and how you interact with people. I got a call from someone at my very first job that said, um, hey, would you be interested in coming to run the finance group of a, of an architecture firm? And, you know, at first I wasn't sure. I was like, listen, I have two little ones, but I decided to take that call. Mm -hmm. And when I took that call, it happened to be the president of Mancini, uh, Christian Giordano. And we went to lunch. We had a really nice lunch and we talked about, you know, the, pos the potential of the role that I was going to be taking in. So when I joined Mancini at first, I joined as controller. Okay. And, um, you know, so when we talked, when at the one thing I want to bring up, right at the interview 
at the interview process, remember I'd mentioned that I had two little ones. So while we were talking about the role, the first thing, the first question I brought up was, what is your company's policy on family? Yes. Right. I'm a mom. I have two little kids. I'm about to move into a position of, you know, like leadership management. This was not the place for me to dilly dally around the things that were um, important to me. Right. My value system and the current state I was I, I was at that point in time. I had two under two. And so I laid it out. I said, you know, I have a family. What is your policy around little ones? Are you flexible in your firm? My kids daycare do, um, doesn't know me. I need to be able to drop my kids in school. Do I have to be at your organization at night? Or, you know, is there flexibility on there? Um, I was like, listen, moms are efficient. If there's one thing we know how to do with our time is to be efficient, right? Yeah. And so at that interview, I made sure that I put down all my cards and I understood that my value system aligns with this firm that I could potentially be going into and making impact in. And he answered all my questions, right? And even the doubts that I had about myself or doubts that I had about, you know, taking on this very important role. Um, he literally, you know, cleared out all those doubts and made it made it so that I couldn't say no. And so I took the position, you know, 2017, I joined as controller. After a year of really learning about the job, you know, pretty much getting my hands um, mm -hmm. to get my hands dirty. In 2018, I got promoted to CFO. Wow. Uh, 2019, I became part owner. And here we are living through a pandemic, staring a firm <laughs> through a pandemic. So I would say the last year has been pretty much a growth and stretch year for me as a CFO, right? Yes. A lot of companies, and I know we'll talk a bit about that, but a lot of companies have um, had it really tough, especially from a financial point of view. So you can imagine the pressure on me to make sure that my employees are taken care of, right? That's that's really essentially my job, make sh making sure that I can, the firm is uh, financially successful, but we're also taking care of our people. And so it's been incredible <laughs> to say the list, a learning experience for me the last year. Oh my goodness. Okay. I so, that's like an abridged version, but I have to, you know, I want us to keep to time. <laughs> yes. No, that's perfect. Cause that leads right into, you know, me basically saying we have to kind of use, not kind of, we have to use the skill sets that we already possess as individuals. So many of us try to go and acquire new skills, not even taking advantage of what we have. And just as you said, efficiency is one of those things that us moms, we have an order. We, you know, we tend to figure it all out. I don't even know how, but we do. <laughs> Can you tell me how did the inspiration come from now? When did you start She Builds Money? First yes, of all, yes, and, where did the inspiration come from? Yeah, so I say She Builds Money is my COVID baby. <laughs> you know, so you had, you, you did such a good justice, right? Um, speaking about my other organization, She Builds Waves and She Builds Lives. And um, she builds money at the start of 2020, uh, 2020. I really started thinking about, you know, how can I, you know, now that I've been in my career now, 14 years actually this year, and, you know, I've garnered all this financial knowledge. I've, I've seen how to, you know, run firms from a project level um, and now managing a firm. Um, how can I give back? At my core, generosity is so important to me. Knowledge, sharing knowledge is so important to me. And so I started thinking like, how can I give back? How can I create, especially for my skill set, right? My financial skill set. How can I give back to other firms that are coming coming up in the industry, finding their way, especially business, strat financial strategy, financial foundation. How can I um, create an avenue to share value and also to create tools that small firm owners um, can, can begin to um, feel strengthened, feel empowered when it comes to understanding their business finances. And so last year, actually, She Builds Money is about to be one. <laughs> um, it started last year. I said, you know, I needed to create again in my She Builds brand, She Builds Money, so that I could um, find ways to empower and make sure that small firms are thriving fi um, financially and are being successful when it comes to understanding how their finances work. So that's how it started. That's where the inspiration came from. It's, it, it comes from a lot of the things I do comes from giving back. I know. So how can I make it easier for the next person coming up or the next firm coming up? I love that. And then you didn't 
try to recreate, well, not necessarily recreate, well, go and start something new. You use what you already have. Yes. Have that efficiency, the usefulness, resourcefulness, and everything. Well, did you just really get bored? Did you get bored? No, I mean, you, you heard my bio, right? It's pretty packed. <laughs> it's pretty packed. So, um, it's, it, you know, I wasn't bored, but it's, again, it's just um, in terms of capacity or in terms of, of how I really want um, to make impact yeah. from a purpose uh, standpoint of view, um, I had to figure out a way to fit this into my incredibly uh, crazy but busy schedule. Um, and so uh, if you don't mind, I could talk about some of the ways in which uh, she builds money um, impacts. For yeah. us. Um, so, yeah. you know, one of the things I started doing was like putting out information right? We see it on the personal finances front, but what are, what, how are we, uh, what information and how accessible is information, financial information for small firm owners. And so, you know, on our Instagram platform at She Builds Money, my ladies, my mom. Let's take a mother. step back. Let's define small firms. So yes. they can understand exactly the type exactly. of Exactly. Exactly. So small firms are, you know, maybe zero to three person firms, right? You're either a solopreneur or your business is now growing and you're able to hire one, you know, one, two or three, one, two people to work for you, right? So zero to three person firm, um, you're just either just starting off or you're even in your business, right? Again, finances, understanding your business, that foundation, you always need it, right? You always need a refresher. You always need to be thinking about it, keeping up with um, all the new information that's out there, right? So zero to three person firm, you know, maybe your revenue, um, your revenue, the amount you're bringing in is anywhere between zero to 300,000, right? You're running your business, you have it going, you're yet to like just take off your right at that cusp, but you want to make sure your foundation is set. Yeah. So that's what I mean by small firms. And, you know, for me in our industry, in the architecture, interior design industry, interestingly, the industry is largely made up of small firms. Mm -hmm. About 74% are small firms, right? They're either like, you know, working moms, maybe you used to work at a larger firm, you had kids, and then you you left, and then you said, okay, you were gonna go start your own thing. Or maybe you hit a, um, a progression um, uh, ceiling, right? So you're like, oh, maybe you always wanted to start your firm. That's that's who she builds money serves, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I define, you know, so that's our our. Um, so is it when like small design firms? Or yeah, yeah. So right, okay, perfect. Yeah, so right now, you know, the focus is on small design firms, but really and truly, the information, no matter your industry, right? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your industry. So tap into it. Tap into everything we're sharing. Um, you know, so it's giving out value, giving out, uh, we have free resources, right? Because sometimes, a lot of times you don't even know, uh, what should I be looking at in my business every, uh, from a financial standpoint every week? What do I need to look at daily? What should I be doing monthly? So we've created a um, finance task at a glance, cheat sheet. You can go in and check it off. I'm a big, uh, I love it when people schedule financial meetings with themselves. So if we have anyone in the, in the house, guys, Schedule your finance meeting. For last idea, I'm sure you take care yes. of this, right? You are our accountability accountant. So I know you take you make sure that that meeting is set, right? So we there are free resources. Or like, how do I even know um, how much I should be bringing into my business every month to make sure that my business can stay uh, can stay afloat, can run, right? The interesting thing is small firms within five years die out yes. and they die out from cash flow not understanding cash flow, right? So when I start, when I created She Builds Money, I was like, okay, aside um, the resources, aside the value they're bringing, how can I create a tool that is affordable, but that will essentially be like a bolanle, you know, <laughs> a bolanle on the go, right? <laughs> because if you're a small firm, you might not necessarily be able to afford a CFO right now or a controller right now, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be on top of your cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I need to create a tool that can, you know, teach small firm owners how to understand, master 
take control, feel like, you know, they truly understand their cash flow process from start to finish. And so we have a cash flow tool that, we, that we've created for purchase, right? At a price point that firms can afford. A lot of, in our industry, a lot of the, uh, you know, tools, they're so expensive. Small firms are priced out. You get what I mean? And I so, do, I do. Right, and so, my, my main thing is keep it so simple. Use the language that small business owners understand, right? Me and you, we can be here talking about accounts receivable or accounts payable. But, um, so no, you know what, Bilani, that leads right into, and I think you kind of answered it. Um, how important is knowing your numbers and being in control of your finances? Um, how important is that to your firm? Oh, well, it's a small business firm. Uh, yeah, 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 it's incredibly important, right? For me, there's so much you can learn <laughs> about how your business is performing by paying attention to your numbers, right? You can see if, you know, most business owners want to know if they're okay, right? At the end of the month, am I okay? <laughs> and then after you know if you're okay, can I afford to take care of my bills that are coming up next month? Okay, if I can afford to take care of the bills coming up next month, can I begin to make business decisions? Yeah. Can I afford to hire someone, right? right? If you get this influx of work, influx of services or influx of product, can I, um, can I afford to hire someone? Can I afford to hire help? How do you know if you can afford these things right. or make the, 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 the business decisions you need to that will help your business grow if you're not paying attention to your numbers? Mm -hmm. So you have to consistently consistently, not once in a while, not maybe if I feel like it, but, you know, set up the system that will help you pay attention to your cash flow coming in, looking at your numbers uh, weekly, monthly, however, you know, on, yeah. but you, you need to pick a rhythm. You need to pick a rhythm and make sure you stick to it because there's so much that your numbers can tell you in terms of understanding the direction of how your business is going. You know what? You said a mouthful. And guys, I hope that you're you're getting exactly what she's putting down right now because she's basically telling you that if you don't know your numbers, you will never be able to get to the point where you can use your numbers to make strategic decisions about your organization. Okay. And so like when I start to like onboard new clients to start to do their bookkeeping and stuff, they're unaware that I can not really advise them until I get some form of numbers. Like if, even if it's only one month of data, I can at least analyze that. But if you're coming to me completely with no financials, no data, nothing, then I am not in the position where I can really uh, evaluate your data. And so you aren't as well. So for you to be in control, guys, you have to, even if you don't want to use QuickBooks or some very complicated system, you need to figure out a very streamlined, like Bolali said, a very simple system that works for you guys, but you cannot run away from not managing your finances. Okay. So 100%. you cannot even, and it's no excuse guys, if you're one man band, look, she focuses only on three member firm. Okay. Yep. And she's telling you that just with your three member firm, four or five member firm, you still have to look at the numbers and you need to look at them consistently at a minimum once, well, at a minimum once a month, but I recommend at least once a week. Oh, uh, yes. You finances, you set weekly goals and things like that, and then you proceed from there. But if you guys are not tracking things, then we will not be able, well, you won't be able to make the decisions that you need as the CEO. Okay, so this is good. We're starting to get in the meat. And, and, and then can I just quickly say something? The other thing is there's a wellness piece to it, right? You want to be able to sleep at night understanding, yeah. <laughs> right? There's a wellness piece to it, right? Like when you don't, in your think about in your personal finances, if you don't know where your money is, you're like, oh my God, I need to check my bank account before I can swipe and buy this $5 coffee I want to buy. It's the same, you know, same principles apply in your business. You want to have peace about your business. And the way to have peace is to set these rhythms, like Flash Ali had said, weekly. I'm a huge proponent of weekly, weekly, monthly, so that when you get to the end of the month, you're not overwhelmed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Remove that stress, set things so that you are monitoring it consistently and watch, you will see changes in your business.
changes. And so I even go as far as see that, it, well, just to give you guys an idea of how in depth the numbers can show us what's happening. When I'm looking at my clients' numbers, I can see if they were struggling in their marriages. I can see if the mom didn't have any help with the kids because on particular days, you'll see the, the revenue down or you'll see them not posting or didn't make any money or process the bills late. And I can kind of see them going into a slight depression just off the way that they're handling their finances. So from your perspective, working with small firms, where do you see the the change come necessarily because the hardest part i've seen is getting them started and getting that routine once they get that routine where does the change from your perspective and the excitement come into play when they're excited about looking at their numbers and staying consistent and doing things the right way yeah so one i think you know even before that excitement comes right there has to be a mindset <laughs> There has to be a mindset change, right? Like a lot of a lot of us, we might have said, oh, I don't really like numbers or oh, I'm not good at numbers, right? All these limiting beliefs yeah. that have been ingrained in us. And so I think when that mindset change changes, when you keep your um, system simple, when you begin to see, OK, I'm, I'm understanding what's happening, even if you don't earn any money that week. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you know you've kept to task, right? Celebrating your small wins, right? That's that's really important. That's when you start to see the excitement, right? You're like, okay, now I now now I'm getting to understand what's happening in my business. Now I now I'm I'm empowered. Now I know that if I need to buy a a, a, a I need to upgrade something, right? To make sure that my business is beginning to grow beginning to get on the tangent it needs to be that's when you see the excitement there's just something right there's like an aha moment that pops in their heads when you know that okay i'm in control <laughs> i'm in control of it right but i think if you don't have that mindset shift all these things that we're talking about here you can begin to put in the routines you know systems whatever it is in place but if your mindset doesn't change, if the values, you know, understanding how important it is to be paying attention to your numbers, if that doesn't change, we can't promise you excitement. It becomes, mm -hmm. right, it becomes hard work, right? It's like you're working against yourself. And so the first thing to make sure you can get some excitement about it is change your mindset. Yes. The excitement oh, will come. But you nailed something that I didn't even consider your vibe. Well, I probably years ago when I thought about it. But now when you you just brought something back up, values. When you value the dollar or value your hard work and the effort that it took for you to make the money or value just have just have certain principles in place, then you will probably have an easier mindset shift because you say, you know what, this goes along, this goes against my morals and my values. Yeah. My mom will say, I need to pay my bills on time. I need to be debt free or whatever the case may be for each his own. But based on your values, so I really, really like that. I think I'm going to have my team cut that one up. That values one um, was right on point. So, guys, right now you are tuned in to the Money Zone. I have Bolali Williams only, guys. She is the co well, part owner and CFO of Messina Duffy, guys. They are... Um, help design firms in the architectural industry, guys. And she is one of the few Nigerian-American um, CFOs of a company that was around since 19, if I'm not mistaken, 1915. Yes, 1915. Yes. Yeah, so, guys, um, if you are on Instagram, head over and follow both of her company websites. Well, both her company Instagrams. No, Messina Duffy, M A N C I N I underscore Duffy on um, Instagram and Messina Duffy on um, Facebook, guys. Head over and follow them. And then you might find her on there. I saw her on there. Um, their Instagram feed and then you can go follow her personal page and everything. So she's a mom, a wife, and what would I say? Uh, not a serial preneur, but multipreneur. Uh, multi <laughs> 
And so guys, we were just diving into the importance of, regardless of the size of your your business, your, your firm, your organizations, the importance of having your finances in order and having some type of routine. And also we tapped into the things that we're able to see and help you with, and you're able to see and help yourself with once you have the number. So this is good. And I hate that we always try to get right into it. It's so always like that, right? Second half. Yeah. Okay. So before we go into the second half of things, from your perspective, what could smaller firms start to do differently or start to do earlier in the business to really get a grasp on their finances and become a little bit more financially free? Or stable, I must yeah. say. Yeah. Listen, again, it's just tackling it head on. Do not run away from it. Make sure you have the right rhythms in place. Make sure you have the right tools. Make sure you have the right structure. That is how you set yourself up to win. That is why she builds money focuses on like this zero to three person, right? You're just starting your firm or you just begin to run your firm because there's such good opportunity to make sure your foundation is right. As your company grows, complexity comes with it. You, you start adding more people, complexity comes with it. So right guys at the beginning like if you're if if you feel like you don't have a good solid foundation start to educate yourself there's you know we're in this era where there's so much free information out here you need to tune into the money zone i bet you for that is dropping so much good gems right there's so much good information out there that you should you should embrace edu you know embrace your embrace the literacy part of it like soak it all up and that is what is going to help you um, get your house in order, get your business house in order. Like, like I like to say, you know, so that, um, you're not running into issues or you know how, or you're, be, you're not being so reactive yes. when situations come up, but you're being proactive about it. You're being proactive about it. You're not caught off guards or, or the amount of times you might be caught off guards, right? For example, a lot of companies with COVID, right? No, who knew <laughs> that we would be where we are. Right. But think about, companies that already had rhythms or systems in place they're in a slightly better position yeah. right than one where you maybe you didn't have a handle on your finances so that that's my biggest advice make sure your foundation is is set tackle it head on don't be afraid it's just numbers if you don't if you don't you know you can't correct or you can't um improve what you're not tracking that's true. You can't true. improve it, right? So you need to make sure you're tracking. So it even lets you know, oh, when is my business um, high season? When are things quiet? When are, you know, like yeah. if you're not tracking it, you don't know. Yeah. Track it so you know how to like manage the money from your high season so that when the low season comes, you're not like, oh my God, how am I going to pay? How am I going to pay myself? <laughs> no, let's even talk about the opportunities because once you yes. get the numbers, you can really see the opportunities within a business. How could you really expand? Should you expand vertically or horizontally? Like yeah. how, what products should you invest in? Should you start manufacturing? And, you know, just looking at the numbers, guys, will not only allow you to be in control and have, you know, better sleep, um, but it will allow you to take advantage of all the opportunities. And I always say that your accounting will be your rich baby daddy when an unforeseen, I love that. <laughs> yes, when an unforeseen circumstance like the yes. pandemic occur and you were tapping into that slightly. All of my clients that had the bookkeeping in place that I'm actually there for on accounting, they were prepared and ready for um, the COVID applications, EIDL, taking advantage of everything. All of the people that I've been asking them for years, let me do your bookkeeping. You know, this is, let me become your accountant. Shouting on Facebook for eight years and majority of them were not prepared for that opportunity, guys. So you always, if you're going to fall on anything in business, never let it be your marketing and your accounting. Those two things kind of is the bridge between the whole organization. So as you guys can see, if you watch my feed, even if I don't go live, my team never stop marketing. Even if I don't do a radio show, we're never stop marketing. My emails will never stop. And you guys need to do the same thing. I can never stop doing my bookkeeping just because I'm sick or um, yep. a month goes by and I didn't meet my financial goals and I'm afraid to look at numbers. We cannot avoid those difficult times because that's when the numbers will tell you what you cannot see, guys, 
on the surface. So look, Bolani, we starting to get juicy, and yeah. I, and uh, I'm getting excited. So guys, do me one do me one favor before we go on a quick break. Please hit over on Instagram, follow Messina underscore Duffy. Um, follow them, and it's Messina Duffy at um, on Facebook and Messina Duffy um, Go to their website, check them out, um, and. If you're watching us on Instagram, Facebook, or anywhere, if you want to watch the repeat or the replay of tonight's show, head over to ripradionetwork.com. Within 24 hours, the video will be there. If you want to watch the show after 24 hours, please go to all places where podcasts are housed so you can tune in and um, take advantage of tonight's show, especially for all my moms. So next segment is kind of uh practical so i will ask you just to prepare you before we go to break i will ask you maybe like four or five steps um for a three you know person firm what they should do to get their finances in order and like four or five tips for us moms on how to juggle doing it all and having it all is that okay with you yeah, that's fine wonderful perfect so guys what we're going to do we're going to take a quick little break guys and we'll be right back your refund is not something extra okay that's another thing y'all see here not even understanding that if you broke you do need to find somebody to help you with your coin i don't know why y'all think that accountants and financial advisors only work for the rich hell no nah. i had to financially advise myself to even get to where i am now when I was getting a refund, I had to financially advise myself on how to use the refund. Like, guys, my story, I used my actual tax refund to build my business. I really did. I had Brim. I was, what, Brim was born 2012. Started the business 2011, August. I got my refund, and I put it right back into the business. I didn't have employees then. I didn't have a big office. I didn't have all of the stuff that we got right now, right? I put it back into the business. So I had to financially advise myself too. So regardless of how much money you have or how much money you don't have, are you being smart with what you have? Are you going to do right by with, with what you have? Make some investments. Save some stuff. Start your business. Do some things. But the last thing that I want you guys to do is just fuck it up. And that's been one of my drinks. I'm just, and I'm, that's my little drink song, man. No, that's the last thing I want you guys to do because we're still treading light waters right now, y'all. I don't know when we're going to get out of all of this mess. And I don't see anything happening overnight because there's too much policies happening. They haven't even really niched down and say who deserved what or who's supposed to get what. Biden is putting in so many executive orders and doing so much that they're blindly not even seeing that we're developing more and more problems as we're growing, as we're moving. So that's another story. We talk about taxes. Do not file your taxes via TurboTax. I know you cheapskates and all y'all like flush that here you go again with this nonsense. Y'all know every year I say it because I want you guys to do better. And let me give you a real live example of why. TurboTax is never really that satisfying for all of you. Okay, number one, I had a client call. Um, they were already paid their invoice and moved forward, but they called the office. Well, they, Randy called them and scheduled a meeting with me. Scheduled a meeting with me, right? And so the first thing that the individual and his wife was saying was that they're not certain that they've been able to maximize. Hey guys, and we are back. So if you're just tuning in to the Money Zone, I'm here with Balani Williams. Um, Oli guys, she is the founder of She Builds Money, She Build Waves, Reach Nigeria. She's a CFO, guys. She's a mom, wife, and everything. And tonight's show has been absolutely amazing. So I advise you guys to tune in and watch the replay on RipRadioNetwork.com or check out the replay within 24 hours on 
platforms was um, all podcasts or house guys if you have not joined our mailing list please head over to bit.ly forward slash tmz get notified so you can get notified when we have amazing guests like our guest tonight and you can get prepared and be ready with your notepad and you know and you know get the juice and the pdf and all that stuff that we will send um and the replay after tonight's show so guys right before the break we were going into all of the fun stuff right and i kind of gave her an idea <laughs> of what i will be asking but let's go right into it so balani what will be maybe three or four um first steps for our small firms that are timid of money and numbers what will be your first what would be the first three steps that you would advise them to take um, to get in a money routine and get closer and more intimate with their finances? Sure, sure. So, I mean, one of the very first things that I think, you know, small business owners need to understand from a financial point or a cash flow point is understanding what your cash, um, cash cycle is. Understand your cash flow cycle. How do you pay bills? Yep. When are your bills due? How does money come into your business, right? A lot of times we cannot control how money comes in, but we know at the first of the month, our rent is due <laughs> or, you know, you have exactly, you understand exactly um, how your bills are paid. So that's one of the very first things that I think is important, right? If you're trying to manage money, cash in your business, you need to understand what the cycle is. Mm -hmm. So that's my very first tip. Now, when you understand what that cycle is, now you have to stay on top of it. You need to, <laughs> right? I'm not saying, oh, just put this on a spreadsheet and like, you know, okay, now I know that at the first or the 15th, well, you need to stay on top of it, right? You need to make sure you're staying on top of who owes you money. <laughs> And you need to stay on top of who you owe. So uh, first tip, understand your cash cycle. Mm -hmm. Second tip, stay on top of your outstanding invoices. And why do I say that? Because that's how cash flows into your business. You can send out a million dollar invoice, <laughs> you know, a million dollars worth of invoices. But if that invoice doesn't change to cash in your account, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean nothing. And what do I mean by that, right? Like depending on if you're providing a service or, you know, it, it could matter if you're doing a service or a product, but let's, let me use service example since that's, you know, my realm. Um, from the very beginning, once you develop a relationship with clients, let your clients understand what your payment terms are, right? A lot of us, and if we're small, Sometimes we get forgotten. <laughs> we get forgotten in the midst of the big things, right? So understand, like build a relationship with your clients and say, listen, my payment terms are on receipt or 15 days or whatever the case may be, but don't wait till the 31st day asking for your money. This is services you provided, right? So you can begin to form a routine where you, you either reach out to your client five days before your due date or whatever the case may be and say, Hey, Fola Shade, um, I just want to make sure that you received my invoice um, and that we're all set uh, for payment. Your client begins to understand even before you ask, they're already paying you, right? Um, and then maybe the third thing, third thing I want to share is um, save a cash reserve. A lot of us start businesses. We don't pay ourselves. We don't, we don't plan for our business. I don't, you know, I don't care if it's, um, you know, figure out a percentage. If it's 5%, if it's 10%, but you want to start building a cash reserve in your business. And what does that do? It protects you, one, from unforeseen circumstances, right? We might not have something like a COVID that happens, but businesses have um, ebbs and flows, right? And so if you have a cash reserve, one, it helps, it protects you, right? It puts you in a position where you're able to um, uh, make decisions. And then two, it's freeing. You can get to the end of the year and then, oh, I'm sorry about that. You can get to the end of the year and um, you want to you want to hire someone. But if you don't have any money, how are you going to do it, right? So those are three tips that I want to give you. Like if you're just starting, one, understand your cash cycle. Two, stay on top of your outstanding invoices, right? Form relationships with your clients. And three, build a reserve. 
Um, so those are three tips that I wanted to, to just share for any new business owner that I want you to, to, to begin to implement in your financial cycle, um, you know, making sure that things are great for you. I love that. So guys, she said it, cash flow cycle. Okay, so in layman's terms, okay, just to break it down, sure. in layman's terms, that means all of the money that is coming out and going in, you should have it like listed. So I don't know if you guys are have been following me for many, many years, but I always say you want to know which day your payment, your clients are supposed to be making payments. So like with me, with my bookkeeping service, each client pays on a different day. Um, some clients pay on the 28th, recurring, some clients pay on the 15th. So what I strategically do, guys, and you might want to write this down, is when I'm on my sales call or when I'm closing a deal, I try to get them on a day I have no payments coming in so I can, you know, close the uh, the payment gap in terms of when I'm receiving and making money. But if you don't know your cash flow cycle, you won't know that in week three, you don't have any invoices that are being sent out to actually potentially collect revenue. So what happens in week three, you have a negative every week. And it's simply because you didn't look at your numbers and you didn't realize you have no revenue coming in that particular week. So at that point, your numbers are doing you a favor, guys, and allows you to say, oh, well, let me contact some people. Let me yep. make sure. Uh, you know, in, figure out, make some phone calls or go set up some sales calls. You can actually be proactive at that particular time. So that's one. Number two, she said, you need to know, be on top of your money. What's outstanding? I've seen, and you've probably seen this too, when a new client, they're just so happy to get a client that they even forget to even build the people. Three months down the line, they're like, oh, I've done all this free work. You're not a bank. Okay. You're not <laughs> oh, guys, stay on top of that. Like, you can be your own worst enemy just because you guys are running from the numbers. And then, the last but not least, now though this is one of my biggest challenges with my with my new clients, is being able to get disciplined enough to even build a reserve. Mm -hmm. um, because I found that in my position, I'm breaking about 15 generational curses. I'm breaking a hundred different bad habits, which all impact the way they spend money. And it's yep. like, girl. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I, I get it. I completely get it. Yeah, so guys, having that, when she say reserve, it's having that savings, having that cushion, having something there. So just in case something happened, you won't be stressed. You'll be like, okay, girl. All right, I'm going to go in a savings account. I'll transfer it over. Or I'll go ahead and you know move it over and take care. You you have something to fall back on, guys. You're you're not running off an empty tank. Okay, so that was a mouthful, y'all. Right? <laughs> well, it's good stuff. Yeah. Listen, good stuff. Yes, I hope y'all wrote it down. And these are you know, and just to give you guys maybe one action step to take it a bit further, just write out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to thirty, and right on the first day, will payment come out? On the second day, will payment is due? On the third, that's just just start right there. Very simple. The cash flow cycle don't have to be. You don't have to think so hard. Just yep. one, two. The first of the month, second of the month was due. Fifth day, then do the same thing for your payment cycle. Um, okay, so for my moms that want to have it all, Belani, how do you manage everything? <laughs> like, I have a two year old, a husband, and a business, and a lot of team members, and I, I know do well. well. <laughs> but we want to hear from a fellow mom and a fellow wife. How do you do all of that? How do you do it all? Listen, so for me, um, one, right, I, I think I. One, I have huge goals and dreams. And, you know, when I started having kids, I didn't just want my life to just be kids, right? There was somebody there, Bolanli there, that needed to continue on with those big dreams of, you know, again, making it to leadership, making it to where I am. There were big dreams that I needed to fulfill. And how how I started thinking about ways in which to make sure that I can set myself up and my family and my organization up for success, right? So here are some of the tips that I, I, I use. One, while I have a lot of balls uh, juggling, not all of them are active 
at the same time. So you have to understand what season you are. I think that's the first thing again, right? It always goes back to a mindset mentality thing. What season are you currently in and honoring that season, right? So there are seasons where it's grinding season or there are seasons where it's building and planting, right? So understand what season you're in. That's the first thing. Then two, okay, so you have a goal or you want to set up a business. Take small steps. What is the first step, right? We, we don't want to go from zero to 100. How do I go from zero to 10? What are the things that I need to put in place, right? So that I can move from zero to 10. And then when you move from zero to 10, then you will see what works in your home. Okay, like um, right now, are my kids little? Do I need to be the one picking them up? Or do I, you know, do I have a partner who I can share responsibility with? right? You start thinking about those things. But again, guys, we're not trying to go from zero to 100. You want to go from zero to 10, 10 to 20. And before you know it, you begin to understand what the rhythm is in your home. Um, the, the third point, I understand my energy patterns, right? We, a lot of us don't talk about this, but like, when do you perform best? Mm -hmm. Are you a morning person? Are you a nighttime person? Just because everyone says, oh, wake up in the morning, but maybe that's not when you perform best right? But when you, when you study your energy patterns and you understand when you perform best, take advantage of that, maximize that. I'm a morning person. I think, I think well in the morning, I do well in the morning. That's my time outside of, you know, before you start giving to everyone, that's my time, right? So I've identified what my energy patterns are and I make sure I maximize that so I can get the most out of it. And the last thing, out of all of these things, if you don't have systems support mm. in place, it's not going to work. I, 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 um, so for example, let me use one that I was just thinking about today working out. I have my workouts planned, so I don't have to think about it. So I just step into the gym and I go and do what's on my workout. If I have to go to the gym, right? And I'm now thinking, oh, I'm going to work on this, that, it's not going to work. Again, bring it down to the simplest things. Like what is the task that you're trying to accomplish and how can you set yourself up with the right systems, the right structure, the right support so that you can be successful. So those are, those are the, I would say like abridged four points that I really wanted to share, right? You might have big goals, but if you don't, if you don't have the right system to help you accomplish it, then it's not going to work. Then also last point, know when to say no. Yes. You don't have to do everything, you know, because I have this sub systems in place. I know what I'm saying yes to. And I know what I'm saying no to. I know what I'm delegating. Right. So I know that, OK, there are certain things that are not my skill set. I got to delegate it. Um, I know that I'm not going to spend two hours cleaning the house. So, you know, thank God I'm able to afford a cleaner. So somebody's going to come into my house and clean. Right. I don't struggle with those things. So know what you're saying yes to, um, know what you're saying no to so that you can really say yes to the things that you want to do. Oh my goodness, this was amazing. And I know I've missed a few questions um, on my little list that I sent to you, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I, look, moms, I know you guys got it because I've never heard of anyone say, not in the form and fashion that you said, know your energy pattern. That was very deep. And I think many of us struggle because we don't know our energy pattern. So like me, I'm a morning person. So four o'clock, I'm up, maybe even three, I'm up and I'm working hardcore. And then the kids are up at 830. So shift two hours gone with them. And so, yeah, knowing your energy patterns, guys, that was a crucial one. And then I said, I love when you said, you know, evaluate your systems and what works for your family and what works for you, because what works for someone else's family, guys, may not work for yours. Mm -hmm. So like somebody else me, you know, may not want to have a cleaner, but with me, I need that or may not want to have a nanny. But with me, I need that. And you have yeah. to be comfortable um, knowing all of that. So is it anything that you would like to leave the audience with before we go? Time flies. And I hate this truck when I'm having fun. <laughs> And I'm having so much fun right now. Yeah. Um, so, um, so anything that you would like to leave us with tonight? Yeah. So, so again, guys, I think for your businesses, you know, if you're an entrepreneur or you're already working in a company, don't be afraid of your numbers. Your numbers are your friend. 
yeah. right? So they, they're like, what, what? Oh my God, I love what you said. What did you say? Your, 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 your sugar daddy your or something. Your, 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 <laughs> yeah, your, right? your, daddy, your numbers are your friend. Um, so begin to begin to have fun with it. Make it fun for yourself. Um, make it uh, exciting for you so that uh, your business can last. You don't want to run a hobby. You're running a business and you're in business to be successful. Mm -hmm. So the way you get successful is by becoming besties <laughs> with your numbers. So that's one thing I wanted to give from a business point, mommies, extend grace to yourselves. Yes. If you're a mom, you know, or women in general, right? Let's extend grace to ourselves, right? You might just do your best. And if, the, you know, if everything doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but do your best and extend grace. We all need a lot of grace in our lives. And um, just, yeah, that's what I'll leave with. Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, tonight show was absolutely amazing. Please head over to Instagram and follow her company, Messina underscore Duffy on Instagram and Messina Duffy on Facebook. Guys, go to their website, Messina Duffy um, dot com. Check out Bolani, check out She Builds uh, Money and see what her organization has. Because what we've learned today is that even if you're a three man band show, 15 man bash, you need your number so you can be free and in control, guys. And you know, I've been saying it for years and years and years, but to have this beautiful woman say the same exact thing, I hope that it triggered you and say, you know what, Falashta, I give in. Let me go get my stuff in order, guys. <laughs> so, Bonnie, I want to say thank you so much for joining us and gracing us with your presence today. And I think I learned a lot, so I hope that they learned a lot. And we look forward to possibly doing this again. Thank you yes, so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Yes. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Good night, guys.